Hey guys, what's up? Today we are going to implement something that is a nice blend between NLP and computer vision, which is vision transformer. So we are going to go over it briefly and I will actually prepare another video where I will explain this paper, which is an images word, 16 to 16 words, transformers for image recognition at scale. But in this video, we will go over it briefly and we will implement it and in final, we will actually train it. So the motivation for this paper is the transformers are very strong in NLP and usually gives us the state of art results. So we want to leverage that in computer vision too. But how we are going to fit the images to it? So this paper comes with a solution. What they do is basically they take the image and they divide it into what is called patches. As you can see here at the left, these are all patches. Okay, little patches. A patch, a patch, a patch, a patch, etc. So after we divided it into a patches, we feed them into a transformer encoder just like BERT, okay? And those images are actually acting like a tokens to the transformer. So the, in the paper, the patches are 16 to 16 in size. So that's where the name of the paper comes. 16 to 16 words. Another thing that we, another thing that we should be looking at this architecture is that along with the images after we apply them to linear projection, okay, we are feeding position embeddings along with them. Position embeddings are the one with purple, if you are familiar with BERT, we were feeding position embeddings too with the BERT. So that is what it is all about. Also the paper mentions there is this learnable class embedding. What it is, is Let's say we are doing a status classification, okay? Instead of passing everything to the model for inference, we store every value in a token at the beginning of the sentence, which is usually a CLS token. In this case, they, it is denoted by asterisk. All the information is stored in this token, and we only classify that token. Let's say we are classifying it positive or negative as sentence. We classify that token as positive or negative, that learnable token. And that is how we proceed. A same logic applies here. We have a learnable embedding token in the beginning, which is denoted by asterisk. We just classify that. And what to keep in mind that it actually adds one token, uh, one token to total number of patches we have. So it will be number of patches plus extra, extra learnable embedding. We are going to need to know that and we are going to implement that CLS token too. Another thing we need to know about this when implementing it is that how to know the number of patches. So for example, we have an image like this over here and it is a three by three image. And it has a patch size of one. As you can see, one patch, 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 etc. Patch size of one. So how do we calculate the number of patches? What we are going to do is we would divide the tree by one and square it. And it would be the number of patches. We will actually use this formula. So I wanted to implement, uh, I wanted to explain in the beginning. And also let's say if we are going to calculate the dimension of a patch, what we would do is, let's say this is one, okay. We would do for one to one patch is that we would multiply them together, the sizes, height and width. So it would be one multiplied one, one multiplied the not input channels. In this case, it is three and it would be three. So we know how to calculate number of patches. We know how to come calculate the dimension, embedding dimensions of a patch. 
So what happens after we feed them, feed everything, the position embeddings and the patches to the transformer encoder is that basically we take this learnable parameter, learnable embedding here, we feed it to an MLP head, which is you can call it whatever you want, classification head, you can say. And after that, we classify, we classify the token as whether it is bird, ball, car, etc. So in the paper, it is usually an image of 2024 to 2024 and patch size of 16 to 16 is used. But for our purposes, we will use a smaller image and a smaller patch size. So if it is all clear, let's jump into the coding. For this, I am using Kaggle's notebook, but you can use Jupyter, you can use Google Collab, whatever you like, I don't care. So we will start by implementing Torch. After that, we will implement NN from Torch, import NN. Now let's start defining hyperparameters. The first one we are going to define is learning rate. So I'm going to give a learning rate of 1e minus 4. As you know, you can do whatever you want, but it worked well for me. We will need number of classes. This is how many classes we will classify, whether if it is only a cat and dog, it will be two. If it is like other stuff, it will be changed accordingly. So for this, I will say 10 because we will do the training of the MNIST data. After that, we will need patch size. It will be it will be four in this case, and our image size will be twenty eight. We will have input channels of one, number of heads of eight. What is number of heads? Is that as you can see, there is a transformer encoder here, and transformer encoder has attention heads. Number of heads decides how many attention heads we are going to use. So in this case, we are going to use eight attention halves. After that, we need a dropout value, which I am going to use 0 0.001, 0 0.001. We will need hidden dimension. This hidden dimension is the hidden dimension of this MLP head. So I'm going to give it 768. Like I said, you can play it around. Next, we will need add a weight decay. What this is, is the weight decay value that we will give to our optimizer. So in the paper, they use decay of 0 0.1. However, when I tried it, it actually didn't work that well. So I will say to it zero. I will keep it zero, which is a default value. Also, we will need betas for our atom. So for betas, paper is used beta 1 of 0 0.9 and beta 2 of 0 0.999. We will copy the exact numbers 0 0.9 to 0 0.999. After that, we will need activation function, which the paper used GELU. MLP contains GELU line linearity. So let's just say GELU. After that, we will need number of encoders. What number of encoders is? In this case, you can see a one, only a one transformer encoder. But in reality, it is really one. What happens is usually we stack them on top of each other. Okay. For example, for in this case, I want to stack four of them. So what I say is number of encoders four. After that, we have to define the embedding dimension. So we talked about it, how to calculate it. If we have a patch of one to one in size and three in number of channels, we just multiply everything. So that's what we're going to do here. We have the patch size. Instead of multiplying height and, uh, height and width, which are the same, we are going to square it and multiply it by input channels, which will be patch size of 4, 4 times 4 is 16, 16 times 1 is 16. So we are going to say that 16. 
Another thing we need is number of patches. So we calculated this too. If we have treated three image, we will take the hit hey or width, divide it by the patch size and square it. Okay, that's what we are going to do here again. So we have the image size, which is width or height, whatever you like. We divide it by patch size and we square it, which is 49 in this case. After that, let's just define our device and see actually what we are working with. So we will it will be CUDA if torch.cuda that is available. Available. Else we want to use CPU and run it. The first part we are going to implement is the part until here. Okay. The part that goes onto the transformer encoder. From dividing the image into patches to creating the CLS token to merging them with the position embeddings. So first let's do that. I'm going to call it class of patch embedding. And it will take from nn.module. We will start by defining an init. We will give it embedding dimension. We will give it patch size. We will give it number of patches dropout and input channels since it is a pytorch class we will say super init now let's start by dividing it into patches the function that will divide the image into patches so I, what i will call it is patcher so for that we will use sequential and we will use the convolution and then that con 2d we will just get out from that so we will give it some parameters the first one is input channels we will give it input channels equals to input channels output channels equals to output channels uh, sorry output channels equals to embed dim embedding dimension kernel size equals to patch size and stride equals the patch size. What it's going to do is that it will just take the image and divide it into squares of patch size. After that, we will flatten it. Flatten two. And it will be ready to go. The next thing we are going to define is the CLS token, the one that we are going to do the classification with this asterisk over here so how we are going to do that is we are going to call it self that cls token and we will define it with an end that parameter parameter we will use torch that random it will generate the random numbers you can see that people are using generating zeros as initially but i prefer generating random numbers you can use generate zeros too in size we will say one we will give input channels and we will give embedded dimension and since it is a learnable parameter we will say requires grad equals the true so this one this one in number will be replaced by the, our batch size and the next one, next is just input channels and embedded dimension. Now we will need position embeddings. And that is the purple ones that we will merge with our patches. So again, we will use nn for that, nn that parameter, torch that random, again, size, size equals to one now we will say number of patches plus one there's a plus one because see this is the number of patches one two three four five six seven eight nine 
and additionally we have the CLS token acting as a patch so we just put plus one here and as the last, uh, last dimension we gave embedding dimension it is a learnable parameter again so it requires grad equals to true at last we will need dropout easily we can say and then that dropout p equals to dropout now we will continue with the forward pass let's just say define forward self and x we will start by initializing the cls token so self.cls token we will expand it with the shape of our input which is x so which is 0 minus 1 minus 1 what minus 1 means is that it means that we won't change that dimension it tells that to protect that dimension okay now we will get our patches self that patcher we will feed it with our input and we will permute it with 0 2 and 1 again we take the x and we will concatenate it now we will we have the patches okay axis now we want to add the cls token to it so we have this area right of this and we want to add the left cls token so we say torch.cat and we say give cls token and x which are the patches and we say dimension equals one so this guy over here merges the CLS token with the patches. After that, we apply dropout, self that dropout x, and we return x. It is always good practice to check your work if you define a model, if whether it works or not. So that's what we are going to do now. We will say model equals the patch embedding embed dim patch size number of patches dropout input channels channels and uh, let's put it into our device and we will define a dummy input which is x it will be equals to x equals to torch that random n and its dimensions will be a batch size, let's say 512, input channels, which is 1, and image size, 28 to 28. This will act as a dummy image. And let's actually fit that to our newly defined model and get its shape. So we get an error, it says size is not defined, so let's see what's wrong in here because we forgot the equal sign we got another error number of patches is not defined number of patches number of patches there's a typo here another error tensor permuter because it is not permute it is just permute okay now we get our results so with batch size is 512 just like what we fed and expect the second dimension is 50 what it denotes is the number of tokens we are going to feed so it is also correct because we have number of patches 49 plus additional CLS token 50 that is correct and 16 is the size of our patches as you can see here it is the embedded dimension so it is working well now it's the time for the second part of the implementation we implement it here now we will put the transformer encoder in such a way that we can feed our embeddings into it we will define our nlp hat our classification end and we will get our results so let's get to it i will call it vit which stands for visual transformer we will import it from module we will define init say self number of patches 
number of classes, patch, size, embed, then number of encoders, you will take number of heads, we will take hidden dimension, we will take dropout, we will take activation, let me take myself here, activation and we will take input channels. Just like we did super dot init. After that, let's define by using the func the class we previously defined. So let's call it embeddings block. We will say patch embedding, which is this we just defined over here. It will give us the input to our encoders and divide the image into patches. Let's input embed dim, what else we gave, patch size, patch size, number of patches, dropout, and input channels. Next we will need encoder layer. So you may see, we are not going to implement the whole transformer encoder from scratch, it is out of scope. Instead, we will import the transformer encoder directly from PyTorch. For that, we will first use encoder layer. For that, we will do it and the transformer encoder layer. D model equals the embedding dimension. Number of heads, we defined it. Number of heads. Dropout equals to dropout, activation equals to activation, which is gather, batch first equals to true. What this means is that when we define our images, the batch size comes first. So we say that to this encoder layer that the batch size comes first as an input. And alongside with that, we will say norm first equals to true. So this is only a one encoder layer. Like I said, we will stack them on top of each other. So how we're going to do that is we will say self.encoder blocks and we will use nm.transformer encoder. We will use encoder layer that we just defined and we will specify a number of layers which is number of encoders, which we stated as for in the beginning. So we defined the encoder too, so we are around uh, here now. Now we are going to the moving on to the MLP head. So self.mlp head equals the ananda sequential. What we are going to say is that first we will do a normalization, layer norm. And normalized shape will be embedding, embedding dimension. And we will apply a linear layer over here for classification purpose. Input features will be embedding dimension and output features will be the number of classes. In this case, it is 10. Now we actually implemented it and it is time to define the forward, uh, forward layer. Let's say define forward. We will say self and x as the input. So the first thing we're going to do is we will say x equals the self, self that embedding block. So embeddings block. So the first thing is we will get the embeddings and the patches of the image. We put that to X. After that, so we applied here. Now we are feed it to the transformer encoder. We say X equals the X self that encoder blocks X. We fed it to our encoder block too. Now we will feed our input to the MLP head 
and we will do it by x equals the self that MLP had x and we will only take the CLS token. We do it like this for that only we take the zero token. So like we mentioned in the beginning, we don't classify this whole embedding. Okay. Instead, we classified only CLS token in the beginning, just like a sentence classification task. We give, it contains all the information that other embeddings have. It is a learnable parameter and we feed that to the MLP head. And we just classify it. And we return X. So again, it is a good practice to check our work. So let's say model equals the VIT, number of patches, image size, number of classes, patch size, embed dim, number of encoders, number of heads, hidden dimension, dropout, activation, and input channels. You put it to device. Actually, we have to put it to device too. I missed that. And we define a dummy image as an input. Again, torch, that's random n, land n. Batch size 512, let's say input channel is 1, 8 and width 28 to 28. And let's feed it to our vision transformer model. As uh, printed shape. Now we get an error, takes 11 position arguments because we forgot image size here. Let's run it again, ambit dim is not defined because there is no such thing. This is with E. Another thing we missed is that after we concatenated the CLS token with the input patches, we actually need to merge them together with the position embeddings. We have to add them together. So how we are going to do that is that after torch.cat concatenation, we will say x equals the self.position embeddings plus x, we just add them up. And we got the results. 512 to 10 is what we want exactly. So what it means is that we gave it 512 patches. You can call it 512 images. And we gave it 10 classes. So it returned us a probability distribution over 10 classes. So think of it like this, we have the x1, x2, x3 as inputs and for every one of them we have results for y1, y2, y3, etc. So y1 can be a dog, y2 can be a cat, y3 can be a cow, whatever. But each of them has a probability distribution. And when we are doing prediction we will choose the one with the highest. So this is what exactly we want and we can see that our vision transformer implementation is complete and working well. So the next thing we are going to do is actually we will take that, we will take the MNIST data set and we will train it and see how it performs. For training we will use the MNIST data set. You can just access it from here. So let's go overview the data set. We will have train and test files. The train file will have a label followed by pixels, pixel values, and the test file will only contain the pixel values. You can come here to this digit, recogni uh, digit recognizer and just download all the files here. Or if you are working with the Kaggle notebook, you can just come here, say add data, type digit recognizer, it will pop up 
just click this plus button and it will be here. Either way, it is fine. All we need is data. So before we start importing any of them, we will import some additional libraries since we are going to do the training. The first of them is pandas. Import pandas as pd. After that, we will import from torch, import optim for using Adam. From torch.utils.data, we will import data loader and data set. We will from torch region import transforms. We will do some data augmentation and stuff like that with this. So from sky learn that model selection import train test split. We will split the data with this import mat plot lib that pipe plot s plot we will plot the data and results with it after that we will import numpy as np we will import random we will import time it to estimate training time and from to tq tqdm import tqdm for a nice looking progress bar we forgot s here okay now we will add some additional hyperparameters the first one we are going to add is random seat so that our code will be reproducible the second one is batch size i will give it 512 depending on your gpu you can increase it or decrease it number of epochs i will set it to 40 now why this high number okay when we are if we are using transformers like anywhere else you may use two numbers like two three or even one but in this case our transformer model haven't trained on anything basically it is a foundation model so the models that we used at other places we were fine-tuning them they were already trained on mass amounts of data and we were just fine-tuning them on a smaller amount of data. But now we are just training the foundation model from the beginning with a small data compared to a transformer model. So 14 seems reasonable, but you can change it however you like. And we don't need anything else here. If we need, we can just turn back and edit. Now, to make sure reproducibility, we will do some things. Random seed, random seed, np dot random dot seed, random seed, torch dot manual seed, random seed, torch dot cuda dot manual seed random seed and we will do course that cuda that manual that seed all after that we will do torch that back ends that cuda and that deterministic equals the true torch that back ends that cuda and that bench mark and we will set it to false and we will run it so it ran without a problem now let's just import the data so let's go over here and create a new cell so let's start by train train the app equals to pd that read csv and the path to your file in this in my case the path to my file is can be copied like this and uh, it's that so you have to just input the path to your train file for the test df pd that read csv the same but just test and if you want to make this is actually a competition to recognizing this digits and if you want to make a submission you can just 
click, copy the submission file CSV and say submission df equals to pd dot read CSV and this. Making a submission is completely optional, but it is a fun thing to do. And I'm gonna do that. But if you want, you can just omit it. So let's just look at the data. Let's look at train df that had. Let's see how it looks like. I forgot to run it. A train df. So like we looked before, label at the first column, rest is followed by pixels. Let's check test df. There is no labels, just pixels for every column. And let's check submission df2. Like I, but this is only if you are planning to do a submission. And it looks like this image ID and label. As you realized, we don't have a validation data. So first we will create that. We will separate the train data into train and validation data frames. We will use train test split for that. We will put train df. We will say test size equals to 0.1. So 0.1 of all the train data goes into validation in this case. We will set random state equals to random seed to make sure it's reproducible. And we will say shuffle equals to true. We want to shuffle our data set. We will need three separate data set objects. One for train, one for validation, one for test. And they will be very similar. So let's start by train. Class MNIST terrain dataset and dataset. Again, define init. We'll put self, images, labels, and indices. So since this is a PyTorch dataset, we will need init, length, and get item functions for sure. So let's just say self images equals the images, self that labels equals the labels, self that indices equals to indices, and self that transform equals the transforms that compose. So what we are going to do with this is that we are going to tweak with our images. So first we will give, just think that we gave this transform fun, this transform variable and image and operations we are going to define now will be applied to that image. So transform that to PIL image. So we turn it into this PIL, PIL object. After that transform, by the way, this is transforms to random rotation 15. So we are going to rotate images randomly by 15 degrees. What this does is it is a data augmentation. I put it here as a sample. You can apply much more extensive data application techniques, which will increase the results. But just know that this is how we apply here. After that, we will just transforms transforms that to tensor we will turn everything to tensor and we will normalize it that normalize 0 0 0.5 with let's say 0 0.5 if you are going to wait that's this is at long rotation okay if you are going to apply more data augmentation techniques, apart from random rotation, just don't forget that only apply into your train data set, okay? So with this out of the way, we did define length. We'll put self return length of self images. It is simple. When we call length, it will return us the length of the data set. And we want the get item function. What will what it will do is that when given an index, it will return us the data at a specific index. So we will return image. 
self.images, we can choose it with just index and we will reshape it by 28 to 28. We want it as type numpy.unsigned integer 8. So why numpy, why unsigned integer 8? Because it is small, it is not it is not necessary to use any other like long or stuff outside integer, integer 8 is just fine we will need labels self that labels index we will need index self that indices index and we need to apply the transformations we defined here to our image so image equals the self that transform image and we return everything here as a dictionary image image return image we will return label and we will return index index this is a train data set validation data set is super similar so I just copy and paste it. What is different is that, like I said, we are not going to apply data augmentation in the validation data set because we want the pure results of the data set without augmentation. However, we can still apply the normalization and stuff because in their inference time, in the runtime, if you happen to deploy this model into production or another thing, you can still apply the apply these normalizations to the image that you take as input. But if you put that augmented data into your validation and test data set, it will give you wrong results and it may mislead you. So we just remove the random rotation and we can remove the PIL image too. So we remove them both and the rest is the same and we need to change its name to amnest well data set the last one is the test data set now i copied amnest well data set pasted it i'm going to call amnest submit data set so since it is a test data set we won't have any labels as input because that's what we are trying to predict so let's just remove labels. Let's remove la labels from here too. And as you may realize, we don't have any rotation or augmentation in test too. Because like I said, if you do put it in there, it will change your results and it will mislead you. So we remove that, we remove labels here. The rest is the same and we ret don't return any label. And let's run it. As you may remember, we just defined some transformer vision models. And after we defined the classes, we actually tested them to see if they work or not. So we will do the same for data set two. We will take some data and draw them either. So let's start by plot them figure because we will plot some samples from the data sets. We will do F X array equals the plt dot subplots so i will take one row and i will put three columns for train validation and test so i will say one to three to dimensions so we have train data set equals m nest terrain data set first we will give the rent we will give the images so we will give it by train df that I log column um, there is no this column wait yeah column comma one and column so what it does is that as you remember from the train day train df at the first column we have the label we don't want the label so we say we take it from the first one and we don't take the label we take only the pixels if you are familiar with numpy slicing it may look familiar to you 
So that's basically what we did here. And we take values that as type numpy that unsigned integer eight. After that, we need the label string df that i log. Again, we do a similar procedure and we only take the zeroth column because as you can see here, it contains the labels. As a last argument, we will give indices. Oops, we will give, we will turn it into values, of course. Values. And as last, we will take train df that index that values and we gave indices. So we created our dataset object. Let's check if the length function works. Length train dataset. Let's take the zeroth index of the train dataset so that we know the get item function works. And actually, let's show an image from this data set. Say x array zero, which means we will write it into the zeroth column of our subplot. And we say im show train data set. We take the zeroth image and we select the image here because it will trans it will return us image label and index. We wanna select the image from here. So we select it with selected by not images but only image okay and we want to squeeze it the reason for that is it will return us with a depth size or input channel okay we don't want that input channel here so what we do is we just basically squeeze it and get rid of that input channel so we did the squeeze as last we will map it to gray because I want to show it as gray and let's give it a title M show uh, sorry x0 xr0 that set title train image because this is a train image and let's put a separator here okay now we will copy this paste this we will do it for validation mnist well data set i log one i log zero just this will be validation data frames not train validation validation data frame length of the validation data set print validation data set zero im show validation data set zero set title and this is you guessed it a validation image now we do it for test so for test we will let's start by making a test data set mnist submit data set we will only feed we will only feed images and indices but when feeding the images we will remove this iLog okay the reason for that is in the test we don't have to exclude the first column which is label it is already consists of only pixels so we can just take it as it is as as just with values we don't need the labels because we don't have labels only we have we need index indices let's make them tests this is also test this is also test data set this is also test data set. One thing I missed here is that we want to write the, the validation into the first column of our plot. So I change this to for the one. Here I change these to two because I want to write them to the second column of the plot. And this is not train data set. This is test data set. This is not train image. This is test image. And at last, we want to do plot that show and run it. 
we have an error transforms is not defined in train data set to PIL image let's say because trans there is an S missing here let's rent again and it has run successfully so this is the length of our train data set and this is what it returns if we specify an index as you can see image this is the image this is the label it returned so it represents 8 and this is the index of it so let's go over here and see as you can see it is 8 let's go to the validation its size is 4200 we have image which is this all these tenses here has label 8 and index of 5457 let's also check and verify its label as you can see it is 8 again and for the test the size is 28,000 and the image is as we can see in here with this tensor we don't have a label that's what we are trying to predict and it has an index so it is as we like now that out of the way let's just define our data loaders first train data loader we will use them while training to iterate through the data data loader data set is train batch uh, sorry train data set batch size equals the batch size and shuffle equals the true we do that for validation data loader which is val data loader for val data set and we will do it for test data loader test data loader data set is test data set but we won't shuffle it let's run this okay now it's time to move on to the training loop now we are going into the training the first thing we need is a loss function so let's say criterion as nn that cross entropy loss and we will need an optimizer so for this let's move to the paper and let's look what optimizer they use is Adam. So we are going to use Adam optimizer too. Equals to optim that Adam model that parameters betas we already defined them and took it from the paper betas lr equals the learning rate and weight decay equals to Adam weight decay hyperparameter I want I like to estimate the time of the training so I will say start time it that default timer for epoch in TQDM in range epochs I will add two more parameters which is position equals to zero and leave equals to true. What it does is that it prohibits to QDM to print a new line as progress bar every time we do a new iteration. So instead it will stay as a one bar and it will just load. Okay, I will do it with I will do it for all, all two QDM calls. So let's take the model into train mode we will need train labels we will need train preps which will start labels and predictions respectfully we have to store running loss which will start at zero now we will iterate through the data loader iterate with index and image label in enumerate tqdm train data loader position equals zero leave 
equals to true because of the same reason I just explained. Image is image label. We take image from that that we will take it, we will convert it to float and we will put it the device. Why we set that image? Because we return image from the data set. Okay, don't let it confuse you. And we will take the label in the same way, image label, we will just say label and we will take its type as torch that aside integer eight. We will put it to device either. For predictions, we will do it like we will take the model and feed the image like just like we did here when we first defined our model and fed the dummy image just like this model x we fed the image here and after that to, to get the label the predicted label we are going to do is y pred label equals the torch that argmax y pred and dimension equals to one so what we do here i showed you that after we run the model with this dummy data, it gives 512 as the batch size and 10 as the number of classes and it contains the probability distribution. So that probability distribution has the highest number assigned to the predicted label. So we want to take the take the column with the highest number and return it, which will be our prediction. So we do that by argmax and giving it the dimension of one. Okay, that's what it does. If it is, has say, let's say 512 images came here in the white thread and they will have 10 columns each for, for 10 classes, we have to get the one with the highest probability assigned. We, did, we do it like this. That's how we get that. Now let's just add them to the train labels, train labels extent. So we put them into GP, uh, from, we take them from GPU and we put them into CPU when doing storage, when storing them. Because if you store them as GPU in the GPU, you will run out of memory. You will be using your GPU for just storing these unnecessarily. When it is possible, put everything to CPU, especially if you are storing it. So we store the labels, we store the predictions. We do the same procedure by pred label that CPU that detach. We will update our loss plus equals to criterion we defined by pred and the label. This is loss. Now it's time for make sure that the learning is happening. For that, what we do is optimizer that zero grad loss that backward and optimizer that step. So this, these three lines will make sure that learning is happening. After that, we need to update our loss. So our trained running loss will be equals to loss.item. By the way, there is no plus sign. Plus sign is for here. Okay. So we update it for each iteration in train data loader over here. After that, we update the train loss for the whole epoch. So we do that by train loss equals train running loss divided by index plus one. So train running loss takes, stores the loss for all epoch and just adds them up and stores them. And with train loss, we just make it for, we store it as a loss for one epoch. Now we did it for training and we get the training loss too. 
Now what we are going to do is we will do the validation part. It is very similar. We first take the model into evaluation mode. We say validation labels, which will, which will store the validation data. Validation threads, which will store validation predictions. And validation running loss, which will store the running loss for validation. We will say with torch that no rat. So what it does is that it makes sure that no learning is happening here. So we are just trying to get the validation score with the trained model. So we don't want any learning to happen. So we use that. For index, same procedure, image, label, in, enumerate, to QDM, well, data loader. Position equals to zero, leave equals to true. These arguments are for 2QDM, like we discussed. Image equals to image label, image, same things that float, that to device. We do it for label, image, label, label, that type, torch, that unside integer, eight, that to device. Y prediction equals to we feed the image to model and Y prediction label, which will be the predictions, is torch that argmax Y pred and dimension as one. Why we do that, we just discussed in the training part to take the highest probability. After that, let's just store them in one labels that extend label that as we discussed, we put them into CPU first, then we store them, which is the good practice. Well, threads, again, we extend it. Y pred label with yeah, label that CPU that detach again we put it the CPU from GPU and we store it like that. After that we take the loss is criterion Y pred and the label and we update the while running loss loss plus equals the loss that item. And we update the loss for the whole epoch, which is well loss equals the well running loss divided by index plus one. Now train and validation complete on top of each other. We want to print them as the train happens. How we are going to do that is we just with print. Let's do a separator here. After that, let's say train loss epoch. Let's give the epoch number epoch plus one. Train loss that for f. So what it means is that I want only I want the four digits after the train loss value. So I did something wrong here. What did I do wrong? I closed the brackets. Okay. Close the brackets here. Train loss epoch epoch plus one. Train loss dot for f. I don't know. We take the same and we do it for valid loss, validation loss. Okay. Validation loss epoch plus one, but this will be well loss. Loss that for f. I feel like I missed something here, but probably it will give us an error even if I did. Now let's try. Let's print the accuracies. We will calculate the accuracies on the go. So for train accuracy. Oops. Accuracy. Epoch. Epoch. Plus one. How we are going to calculate it is that 
you will do sum 1 for x and y in zip train threads train labels if x is equals to y and we will divide it by length of train labels i will explain what's going on here and we will take only the last four digits okay train labels plus f k this i missed the parentheses here probably this they do match they do match they do match okay i missed this Parent there's one more parenthesis needed here okay so what i do is i iterate train press and train labels with x and y and if x and y values are equal i say this is one okay we found a correct prediction let's say x is cat okay which is the prediction and y is the labels the grand truth that is cat too then it means we made a correct prediction and we give it one in the end we sum up all the ones and we divide it by the length of the data which is train labels we can say in this case and as a result it gives us the accuracy so we copy that we paste that and we do it for validation again but the only difference is that these are well instead of train and we put another separator multiplied by 30 we started a timer in the beginning now we stop it stop we go to the beginning stop equals the time it that default timer and we will calculate how much time has elapsed it will be training time stop minus start i only want the last two digits so that 2f seconds okay now let's run it when it gives if it gives an error let's meet here again and if you're on kaggle before running it what you need to do is you need a gpu you can go here you can say accelerator and choose gpu and turn it on okay so let's start the train again let's meet here okay we got an error what happened is that i forgot parentheses here and here and we don't need these and let's run it again we got another error in the validation part i forgot parentheses here run it again our training is complete and we are back here let's look at the results our train accuracy is 0.9 for 40 tpoc our validation accuracy is 0.92 for the epoch 40 you can pump those numbers up but since this is just a basic tutorial i will we will just continue now the first thing we want to do is we want to torch that chuda that empty Cache. What it does is, wait a sec, there is y torch.cuda.empty cache. What it does is, you load some things in the memory, the model, the images, and you have the GPU nearly full. So before we continue, we have to offload it. And we, all, we can offload it with this line. Okay, we have we want to have free space in our GPU. So that's what we do here. Now let's continue with the predictions. As you know, we have test data loaded too. For that, let's start by creating a list for labels. 
list for IDs, oops, and images. Again, we put the model into evaluation mode. Again, we do with torch, that's no graph, just like we did in the validation part. We don't want any learning, any gradient update, so we put this. Similarly, for index and sample in enumerate TQDM test data loader. Position equals to zero. Leave equals to two. The two QDM arguments we talked about so that it stays in its place. So image is sample image. We put it to device and we store the IDs. Extend integer we want to store the IDs as integers. We add one because this is by the way for submission. Uh, because the files start from zero, but the indices are added one. So we add one for i in sample index. If you if you don't want to do submission, you don't have to store the IDs. Let's get the outputs. It is equals to model image. Again, image that extend we store the images because we will actually look at the predictions and original images. First, we detach it and then we put the CPU. Like we mentioned, we don't want to take memory from the GPU, so we do that. And we also store the labels, extend again. We want to store the labels as integers in torch.argmax. We are selecting the highest probability among dimension one. Uh, let's run this. And extend because it is extend. Uh, it's running. Now let's actually plot some test data and see our predictions. To do that, let's say plot.figure f and xra equals the plot that subplots two because we will plot in total of six images two rows and three columns and we will need a counter we will iterate through the rows in two and we will iterate through the columns after that we will put this image into I throw a jade column and we will show that from the images we will take the counter one we will squeeze the batch and C map it to gray so we will show it gray and we will set a title for it and we will say the predicted value labels counter okay let's close this and update the counter and in the end what we need to do is let's just check this out plt that show and uh, let's show it so as you can see we have six images this is two model predicted is correct this is zero model predicted is correctly this is nine model predicted is correctly this is zero the model predicted as four this is a mistake this is three model predicted as three seven predicted seven so out of the six images we chose we have one wrong prediction and if you want to continue with the submission part, you can just do it like this. df equals to pd, that data, frame, list, zip, ids, and labels. Columns. Image. Id. 
and label. Submission deactivated to CSV submission CSV index equals to false submission deactivated hat. As you can see, this is your submission file. You can just come here, click submit, and it will actually submit it. So that's all. We actually we trained the model, we implemented it from scratch. And yeah, if you like the video, just make sure you give it a like, subscribe to my channel, it helps a lot. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask it in the comments. See you next time.